So, let's play a game! Games are fun! But move over, Scrabble! Get lost, battleships! Take a hike, Boggle! Ah, Boggle. Heady days. There's a new game in town, and it's called How Much Bullshit You Can Put Up With At Once. Now, the aim of the game is to have layers and layers of oppressive awfulness loaded onto you until you snap. As the bullshit meter goes up, you have to do your very best to keep your brain from boiling over into a rage-filled explosion. Sounds like fun. It is. Are you ready? Go! Government officials repeatedly breaking lockdown rules and then blaming the public for not following those rules. Repeatedly stating schools are safe despite warnings from scientists and unions. Opening schools for one day to ensure massive virus transmission, then closing them the day after. Keeping the airports open and allowing travellers to continue flying into the UK with no checks or testing still up until this month. Offering claps for NHS staff and refusing to give them a pay rise. Awarding massive COVID-19 contracts to companies with little or no experience, many having direct personal links to Tory MPs. Opening Christmas for families to mix, then cancelling it a few days before the big day, but still giving people an evening to panic and pack out train stations. Guaranteeing all the benefits of Brexit and then finding out there are literally none. None. Literally none. Literally none. There's no any. There's not a single one. No. Introducing bee killing pesticides now that we're out of the EU. Hospitals now at maximum capacity with police cars traveling COVID patients to hospitals because there are no ambulances. Claiming the removal of the tampon tax is a Brexit win, even though the Tories voted to prevent the removal in 2015. Tory MPs and the right wing media backtracking on historic tweets and articles praising Donald Trump, the violence inciting US traitor. Rejecting an offer from the EU to give musicians visa-free travel post-Brexit, refusing to adopt a zero-Covid policy resulting in over 80,000 deaths so far. Time's up! Well, how'd you do? No? Nothing? I mean, that's a lot of bullshit. Nobody cracking yet? Nobody vowing that enough is enough? That we should not roll over and just accept the facts that we are now living in a fascist dictatorship full to the brim with blatant shameless corruption that is endangering the lives of UK citizens every day. You see, I bet you didn't know that you were living in a fascist dictatorship, did you? You thought that was the type of thing that only happened in America or Sports Direct. But believe it or not, we have actually had a fascist coup in this country. And no, not 50 years ago, but quite recently. And it didn't spring forth on the wings of a violence inciting tweet. It didn't come in the form of masked gunmen storming Westminster. It arrived steadily but surely after years of right-wing media pundits gently sowed the seeds of anti-immigrant sentiment through newspapers, TV, social media, allying with right-wing figureheads on the other side of the pond to embolden racists, to legitimise racism, which fueled Brexit, creating a monstrous, unknowable pipe dream of hate and resentment. Mainstream media absolutely quashing any chance of a socialist government through fear and misinformation, always favouring the right. And then, in its final form, the coup arrived in the shape of a bumbling, oafish, privileged, blonde-haired bigot. It happened so carefully and so meticulously, I'm, I'm almost impressed. Well, I would be if I wasn't so f downright angry all the bloody time, all the time! And now, we have a government that basically has carte blanche to do whatever the hell it wants, because they know that nobody will give a sh 80,000 coronavirus deaths through negligence. Nobody cares. NHS are breaking point. Hospitals are full. Staff are on the brink. Just give them some claps. <laughs> Brexit is a week in and is already dismantling our trade, our economy, and any sliver of reputation we have left as a country. Don't worry. It'll get better. Will it, though? Will it? 
Guys, this is bad. Like, really, really bad. If the government f*** up the second dose of the vaccine like they're threatening to, we could be in lockdown indefinitely. Except we're not really in lockdown, are we? Plenty of schools are still open. People aren't getting enough financial support to be able to stay at home. So they're having to make decisions that endanger themselves and those around them. MPs regularly flaunting the rules means that the public don't take those rules seriously. I think we got used to it being so bad constantly that our bull tolerance is getting dangerously high. And the worst thing is that it didn't have to be like this. Countries that have adopted a zero COVID policy from day one are experiencing very low death stats. And no, population is not a factor. UK, 66 million people, herd immunity policy, 81,000 deaths. Vietnam, 95 million people, zero COVID policy, 35 deaths. No, no, not 35,000. 35. 3. 5. Are you f***ing kidding me? But even then, a single death is a tragedy. A single death as a result of government incompetence is a needless tragedy. One death. Could be me, you, your best friend, your grandma. But 80,000? Are you sure you're okay with that? Because I call that murder on a mass scale. And there's a word for that. Well, thank you for playing! Next week, we'll be introducing our new game! How ordinary working class citizens can safely and peacefully overthrow a fascist government to ensure power is given back to the people-